Well, Mark and I both have been really busy over the last 10 years, and, and that's a good problem to have as, as musicians, as far as musicians go. But it was just getting to the point where having a, uh, having a window of time um, to uh, get together and collaborate like we have in the past was really difficult this time because we had we knew we had a five six week window mm -hmm. to actually do the pre-production and record the songs in march and april of this year 2019 so we agreed that we were going to um demo separately and that was kind of a scary uh concept at first just because we'd done it a certain way for so long but it ended up working out you know we we each uh, forced, I think it forced us, us, forced each of us to kind of rise to the occasion and, and put our best foot forward and really ultimately trust our, our internal instincts from, you know, so much songwriting is, is, a, is about filtering ideas and knowing what ideas are good and what aren't good and what will work in the context of Alter Bridge. And I think we've been doing this long enough to kind of trust our, our judgment. So this was a, a sonic experiment that uh, we feel like we landed on our feet. Yeah, our, our demos for for this record were were well thought out. The the drums were programmed. The bass, you know, it wasn't just acoustic guitar singing in you know, a microphone. It was it was uh, uh, dem the best demos we've had going into a record. Um, it got to a point with speaking about my demos where you'd almost put too much time into it. And be like, come on, we get the idea, let's move on, and it's going to be re-recorded anyway. So. Um, but a lot of uh, my demos were done on Pro Tools. So I think he did his on Logic, and uh, yeah, just you know, just just um, did it enough so the band could hear how it should be played and and do their own put their own spin on it. Yeah, easy drummer. Easy drummer. I love easy drummer. It's amazing. I mean, it's it's so liberating because you you don't have to argue with the drummer about drum parts anymore. Uh, and uh, although Flip did give me. Um, he, he, he kind of made fun of my drum, drum programming at one point. But it's funny, the songs he would make fun of my drum, drum pro programming, it was interesting how close some of those patterns <laughs> ended up to the actual dr original drum pro program. Because yeah. there was definitely like, on so not on all songs, but on some of them there's like a real interplay between yeah. what the riff was doing and it was a reason it was programmed that way. But um, It's just his MO to, to yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come down on your drum program. Exactly. But yeah, Easy Drummer, I, I love. Um, and Logic, I... I, I, I absolutely adore, and I think for guitar plugins, I was using the Native Instruments uh, guitar rig. Guitar rig, and I've been using that for like ten years. I love that, but there's some really good ones coming coming out there. Some, there's so many, you know. But guitar rig is one I'm familiar with, and it's my go-to, and it works great. Um, I am not as technologically driven as Miles is. I'm I'm more I I lean on my other one of my friends who plays guitar in my solo band when we're on tour. Uh, with that band, he would sit, set up his Pro Tools rig in our in our bus, and um, you know I would I would do the tracking and then um, kind of let him know what the you know what the feel of the rhythm is, and he would program drums for me because I, I I'm not uh, I could I can get on Easy Drummer and just splice a loop and you know put a fill in there, but these songs are going to come across much better when it's just programmed from start to finish. So um, yeah, just. Uh, I had a lot of help from uh, Elvis and Jeff, our producer and engineer, on the first four demos I did. I got to actually go in for a couple of days and work with them. And with them, you could just knock it out really quick. You know, with when I'm on the road, it takes you know, it might take five days, six days to demo a song. So when you can just knock out four in two days, it was great to have them to help me out. Maybe 16, 17 songs. Yeah. Yeah, 14 so, made the record yeah yeah so, some, something like that not a lot of, we don't we don't write 40 songs and take the best 12 you know we we try to uh if a, if a song's not flowing to begin with it just kind of gets dropped off it falls off and we we only stick to the, the stuff we are pretty confident about yeah with that said i mean there are so many ideas that don't that don't uh, get the love. It's kind of like you have all these riffs or melodies or whatever that you just, you know, I guess for every one song that gets demoed, for me, there's usually 10 ideas that that uh, are, don't get any love. So, you know, we throw, generally we, we have our, you know, our iPhones and, and record ideas into that. And so what I would do is I'd 
find the ideas that jumped out after I, you know, would record them, set it down for a while, come back a few months later and listen to the ideas that were like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to build a demo around that. And, but then there's a whole other, it's like the, the island of, you know, lost toys. What is it? The island of lost toys. Yeah. Where yeah. <laughs> they get just kicked to the sides, poor ideas. But uh, yeah, that's how we do it. Um, you know, a few a few folks online were asking if I was going to sing again on um, future record because I did. Um, um, you know, I first time I sang on one of our records. I'm always doing backup vocals, harmony harmonies and stuff. But my, my debut was uh, I think AB. Where's Word Starker? AB three. Yeah, AB three. So we did kind of a um, discussion between us in the song where I'd, he'd sing the first half of the verse and I'd sing the second half and then we'd harmonize and chorus um and then in waters rising on fortress i sang the lead on um on that tune mm -hmm. and then uh last year what happened where i didn't do any lead vocals and people were like hey is mark going to do that ever again so uh we decided um that uh for forever falling would be that song also you know we only had so much time to record and he could only track so many songs in the limited amount of time so it's either we're going to track 12 songs or, or if you want to sing a song, we can do another one. So um, Forever Falling was a song, so we just had to take that song, pitch the whole thing down a whole step because I couldn't hit a lot of the notes. And uh, even then, with the melody that I had uh, written for the chorus, it was just too, too high for me to hit even a step down. So uh, Miles came in and sang that. And, uh, you know, it's just, a, it's just something different, you know, something different for the fans to... You know, a different dynamic. It gives him a break live. You know, if he's if uh, he gives him a break, so he can come back stronger afterwards. Um, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think just uh, overall our confidence in, in, in the um, people of you know the, the the group of people we have working with us, our producer, our, our engineer, our bandmates. Um, uh, you know, we, it's it's it's, a, it's an exciting, comforting thing to go into the studio for us. Whereas before, for many years, was fighting for survival, and this this every little nuance had to be, you know, um, thought of to the tenth degree, and you get par paralysis by paralysis, paralysis by analysis. <laughs> so I know on Blackbird, you know, that was one of the first records where we rewrote those songs a million times yeah. and spent you know a long time putting that record together. It's one of my favorite of ours, but. Um, Nowadays, it's it's much more easy going for us. What changed? Well, this was the this is an interesting record because like a lot of you know hard rock and particular metal riff a lot of riff oriented music um, can be heavily steeped in angst, aggression to to be congruent with the, the sound of the music. And so this was a record where, speaking for myself, where I was psychologically I really wasn't in that I wasn't in that place the majority of the time you know, I'm in a really I feel like a really healthy place as a human being right now and um, decided to kind of dive into some of the the things that inspired that that uh, state of uh, that's real that state of mind ultimately which revolved around certain philosophies uh, age-old concepts and philosophies that have been around for thousands of years, a lot of which came from, you know, Eastern um, concepts. Um, and so, like, mindfulness is a theme that runs throughout a lot of the songs and the idea of staying very present. And, uh, you know, the last song on the record, Dying Light, is about basically, you know, letting your ego die and staying, um, uh, staying right here, you know. And I, I've found so much solace in that. And I... We've talked with some people who take that as, oh, you, you're trying to instruct people how to live, a better way to live. And I'm like, no, not really. It's just, I'm just regurgitating how I f feel at this point in my life. And some of these songs, I hope, will serve as a reminder. They become mantras. I, a lot, and throughout our career, there are songs, like uh, we had a song called uh, Before Tomorrow Comes on Blackbird, which is one of my favorite AB songs. And that song was about the idea of giving. And I can't tell you how many times the song lyric has popped into my head to remind me if I'm in a situation where there might be somebody in need, not to walk away from that. That song will be like, ah, 
you, you know. sang it, you better live you it. Sang it, you better live. You better walk the walk, brother. You know. So it, it that, that's the beauty of being a songwriter. Is you you kind of become your own self help, uh, mm -hmm. inspirational speaker. But in the process, obviously, people listen to your music and then they integrate that into their lives as well. One thing I don't think. One thing I think either one of us are weary of those. We don't want people assuming we're being preachy, and that's the last thing. We don't. We're not. We're not guys like. We want you to live this way. This is just what works for us, and you we're thirty percent of your income to go to rock and roll, <laughs> forty to go to the church, <laughs> the church of metal. <laughs> okay. <laughs>